Bukanrat ke Sangma Menteri Rangba ke Jilla Haka Arpulai Terik Leber Ulawandra Yaka Mang Tingka ke Jilla Baduna Syih Hajar Sanspak Handai Puar Kelur Tingka Jong Usnam Arhajar Arpulai Hadu U Arhajar Arpusau Kabalong Lai Point Sao Puar Persen Jong ke Growth State Domestic Product GSDP Badu Ong Baka Deiru Ka Mang Tingka Upadba Ni People's Budget Ke Jingyo Lung Pisa Baru Alang Kakad Arhuwe Hajar Nyong Spa Prabhuwe Kelur Tingka Haka Baka Revenue Received Lamang Kat Kandai Hajar Sao Spa Kat Sao Kelur Tingka Bad Ka Capital Received Lamang Ar Hajar Lai Spa Hendri Pundri Kelur Tingka Ong Ukan Rat Habakran Hador Bar Lat Nyok Ya Ka Jingsim Kelyang Ba Ar Hajar Lai Spa Lai Pukandai Kelur Tingka Ka Jingyo Lung Baru Alang La Ken Makan Kat Kat Kandai Hajar Sao Spa Sao Pu Ar Kelur Tingka Ula ong haba benerap baka jing penut baru alang lakhen bakan kot arpu ar hajar arpu ar kelur tingka haka baka revenue expenditure kelong kat nyaw hajar si spa prapun re kelur tingka bat ka capital expenditure kelong sao hajar praspa lai pun re kelur tingka. Kat gom ka jing ong u menteri rangba u babat ya kat tanat pelat tingka ka jing ken antar jong baro ka jing penut kan kot arpu wei hajar lai pu sao kelur tingka lat nyaw ka jing siu ya karam ka bakot Kandai spa prapu praklur tingka. Ula ong baka jing siu sut na kebenta u senam arhajar arpulai hadu u arhajar arpusau. Lakhen antat baka kot si hajar si spa hendri pu kandai klur tingka. Bat ka jing siu ya ka baibam temen ni pension kalong si hajar nyong spa kandai pusau klur tingka. Honorable Speaker Sir, with your permission, I rise to present the budget for the financial year 2023. So today is an occasion of immense pride and satisfaction as I stand before you to present the annual budget for 2023-24. The 38 lakh people of our beautiful state has reposed their faith in this government by giving a stronger mandate. I would like to humbly acknowledge and express my gratitude to the people for entrusting us with the greatest of responsibilities. <clears throat> this is indeed a testimony to the efforts made by the government and the positive changes brought about in the lives of Meghalayans over the, last, over the past five years. Sir, I would like to begin by highlighting our key achievements from 2018 to 2023, despite losing almost two years to the COVID pandemic. The government expenditure more than doubled from 9,528 crores during 2017-18 to 20,729 crores in 2022-23. This demonstrates improved governance and implementation capability. It also reflects the confidence of the union government and other institutions in the capabilities of this government. The cumulative funding from externally aided projects increased from 2,300 crores to over 10,600 crores from 2018 to 2023. As of today, we are implementing several projects in collaboration with agencies like the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, the New Development Bank, and the International Fund for Agriculture Development. This again is an affirmation towards our commitment and execution capabilities from global institutions. It must also be noted that 90% of these loans are repaid by the union government on behalf of the state government. Several mission mode interventions have been successfully implemented in the sectors of horticulture, livestock and fisheries. These interventions have improved the income of over 1 lakh farmers and put us on track for doubling farmers' incomes. Meghalaya has also been among the leading performers in implementation of various centrally sponsored schemes. Programs like MGNREGS, PMGSY and Jal Jeevan Mission are being implemented at an accelerated rate and have brought remarkable changes in the rural areas. We have made noticeable progress 
in health indices over the last few years. The immunization rate have increased from 57% to 91%, and institutional deliveries have increased from 46% to 64%. We have given a never before thrust to youth engagement, development of sports, building an entrepreneurial ecosystem, and skill development. We made a strong beginning towards resolving the five decade long border dispute with Assam and achieved substantial progress. Our strongest contribution over the last five years have been the development of collaborative model of governance based on working together with traditional institutions, women's groups, farmers cooperatives, and youth organizations to create a strong team Meghalaya. Sir, I will now outline the core development vision of MDA2 government, which, will, which we will prioritize over the next five years. We will bring policies and programs to double the GSDP to around 80,000 crores by 2027-2028 and make Meghalaya a $10 billion economy. The effort will be to increase both government expenditure and private investments through prioritizing trade, tourism, high-value agriculture, and building a knowledge economy. We will strive to double farmers' income for the approximately 6 lakh rural households by focusing on horticulture, livestock, fisheries, and sericulture. We will endeavor to achieve nearly zero infant and maternal mortality by ensuring 100% institutional delivery and robust pre- and post-natal services. We will ensure that every child born in Meghalaya gets the best opportunity to reach their full potential. We will increase our investment in early childhood development and improve the quality of education at all levels. We will strive to create 5 lakh employment opportunities for the youth with a special focus on agriculture and allied sectors, knowledge and digital services, entrepreneurship and tourism. We will create a robust sports ecosystem to nurture future Olympians. We will identify grassroots talents and provide world-class training opportunities. We will also develop sports infrastructure across the state to engage and empower young people. We will transform Meghalaya into the most preferred ecotourism destination by leveraging the state's cultural and natural resources and giving impetus to infrastructure development, connectivity, branding, and skill development. We will connect every household with uninterrupted electricity and functional tap water, and every village with motorable roads and internet connectivity. We will build new Shillong City as a growth hub and a knowledge and cultural center of the Northeast region. We will, make, we will also make substantial investments towards transforming Tura and Jawai into growth hubs. We will take steps to increase border trade through improved border infrastructures in the form of integrated check posts, land custom stations, and border huts. We will also take steps to improve connectivity with Bangladesh. We will work to promote and preserve our cultural heritage. To this end, we will pursue the inclusion of Khasi and Garo languages in the eighth schedule of the Constitution of India. We will continue to take steps for permanent resolution of the boundary dispute with Assam. We will ensure that the issues are resolved at the earliest and protect the interest of our people residing in these regions. We will improve efficiency and transparency in governance through use of technology and improving both ease of doing business and ease of living in our abode of clouds. Sir, this is a people's government, and we will govern based on the values of collaboration, care, and commitment. I dedicate this budget to the people, and I would like to term this budget the People's Budget.
Last year, we celebrated the golden jubilee of statehood. I made a promise that we will transform Meghalaya to be amongst the top 10 states in the country by 2032, when we celebrate the diamond jubilee of the statehood. The goal is to be amongst the top 10 states in terms of per capita GDP and achievement of sustainable development goals. Together, we will strive to build a prosperous and a happy Meghalaya. Mr. Speaker, sir, continuing with the annual tradition of bringing reforms in the budgetary practices, we have improved the system of framing the revised estimates this year. From the next financial year onwards, we will endeavor to finalize the revised estimates by February so that the efficiency of spending can be further improved. The GSDP of Meghalaya is estimated at 41,779 crores for the current financial year. For the next financial year, our GSDP is expected to increase to 46,600 crores, an expected growth rate of 11.5%. The share of central taxes is the most important component of the receipts for the state government. The revised estimates for the share of central taxes for the current financial year is projected at 7,386 crores. This is about 18 percent higher than the budgetary estimates of 6,264 crores. The total central transfer for the current financial year are expected at 8,706 crores, including the Finance Commission devolutions and other transfers from the centre while excluding scheme-related transfers. These increased transfers are consistent with the country's growth rate and improved tax collections. I would like to thank the Honourable Prime Minister for taking concrete steps towards strengthening, strengthening the economy. In the financial year 2023-24, I am estimating the share of central taxes at 7,834 crores and a total amount of 8,908 crores as central transfers. Sir, I am happy to inform this August House that the Honourable Union Finance Minister has enhanced the size of the scheme for special assistance to state for capital investment to spur investment in infrastructure. For the current financial year, we have already drawn our share of 742 crores and invested in critical capital projects. Given our effective utilization, we were allocated an extra 307 crores by the union government, taking our total allocation to 1,049 crores for 2022-23. For 2023-24, I am estimating the allocations under this important scheme to be 1,003 crores. The state's economy has been growing at an encouraging pace. Despite the massive disruptions caused by the pandemic, our growth rate for the period of 2018-2023 is at 6.75%. More importantly, the year-on-year -year growth rate for the next year is projected at 11.5%. Extrapolating this trend for the next five years, I expect the state's economy to grow to about 80,000 crores by 2027-28, making Meghalaya a $10 billion economy. The state's own tax and non-tax revenues have also been increasing steadily. As per the revised estimates for the current financial year, our own tax revenue will reach 2,636 crores. For 2023-24, I am estimating our own tax revenue to increase by about 22% to reach 3,205 crores. This includes 1,785 crores as GST, 792 crores as tax on sales and trade, and 413 crores as excise. The state's own non-tax revenue for the year, for the current financial year, is expected to reach 590 crores. This is an increase of 12.5 percent over the previous year's collection of 525 crores. For 
I am expecting the state's own non-tax revenue to further increase by about 26% to reach 742 crores. The process of obtaining mining leases for starting scientific mining from the Union Ministry, from the Union Ministry of Coal is at an advanced stage. I have estimated the total expenditure for 2023-24 at 22,022 crores. This comprises 17,186 crores of revenue expenditure and 4,836 crores of capital expenditure. I am pleased to announce that the projected capital outlay for 2023-24 is an increase of 14% over the year 2022-2023 and 38.5% over the year 2021-2022. This substantial increase in capital expenditure will be the foundation for the projected increase in economic growth. I will now move on to the second part of my speech, deliberating on various sectoral interventions. Primary sector and farmers' prosperity, mission mode interventions, in agriculture. Investing in the well-being of our farmers is our core priority. The government will continue to implement the numerous mission mode interventions to increase the production of niche agricultural and horticultural crops. The persistent work of five years under the Lakadong mission is showing results. The income of the 10,000 plus Lakadong turmeric farmers has increased by more than 50%. I expect similar benefits to accrue to the 40,000 farmers under the Ginger Mission, 20,000 farmers under the Spice Mission, covering traditional crops like pepper and new crops like vanilla. The Mushroom and Honey Missions are also showing significant results, providing additional income to about 10,000 growers. The Aroma Mission has been a huge success, benefiting 2,000 farmers growing aromatic grass, grasses of lemongrass, citronella, and geranium. We have started experimenting with newer and higher value crops like lavender, saffron, and buckwheat. I am allocating an amount of 50 crores for the continued implementation of mission mode projects in agri and horti sectors. The rich diversity of the soil and climatic conditions of the state allow us to grow a range of fruits, vegetables, and flowers. Meghalaya's Q variety of pineapple are one of the best in the country, with an average brick value, bricks value of 17. We are also home to the citrus gene pool. I am allocating 11.3 crores for investment in fruit development with particular emphasis on improving the value chain in pineapple and orange, benefiting about 50,000 farmers. I am allocating a further 5.6 crores for vegetable development to benefit 10,000 growers of potato, carrot, gab uh, cabbage, and other vegetables. The construction of the Center of Excellence at Jongsha, East Khasi Hills, and Dawagri, East Garo Hills will be started in 2023-24. There is immense potential to increase the income of farmers through floriculture. The nascent floriculture industry in the state was disrupted by the COVID pandemic. We will revive the sector through a dedicated floriculture mission focusing on cut flowers like uh, gibberus, uh, carnation, anthuriums, roses, and orchids. Agri-processing, agri marketing, and logistics. Marketing of agricultural produce and protecting farmers against price fluctuation is an important priority for the government. We are working with a network of 500 collectives, including cooperative societies, farmer producer organizations, and village organizations to provide decentralized agri-marketing support. At each production cluster, a collective marketing center comprising an aggregation come mini processing facility is being constructed and handed over to a local collective. Interest-free working capital loans of up to 50 lakhs 
are also provided to the collectives to directly buy the produce from the farmers. About 200 such collective marketing centers have already been set up in clusters producing turmeric, pepper, ginger, areca nut, cashew nut, broom grass, and potatoes. We target to handhold and strengthen the existing 200 collective marketing centers and establish another 200 centers in the next financial year. I am also increasing the upper limit for interest-free working capital provided to cooperatives from 50 lakhs to 1 crore. Prime hubs, which will be higher level aggregation and processing centers, are operational at five locations. Another 20 are being constructed are under construction with an investment of 88 crores. All these agri-marketing initiatives will be primarily implemented through the Mega Lamp program for which I am budgeting an amount of 240 crores for 2023-24. Other critical investments in the agriculture sector include the setting up of state-of-the-art food testing lab at Upper Shillong with an investment of 27 crores. This lab will be completed in the next financial year and will enable testing of our food producers, produce, increasing their marketability and export potential. We will also build a new tissue culture lab to ensure availability of high quality planting materials. I am allocating an amount of 10 crores for this initiative. Efforts to GI tag our unique products and also to promote digital agriculture and agriculture including establishing traceability of the produce of the state will also be prioritized. We have launched the Prime Agriculture Response Vehicle program for providing pickup vehicles at a 50% subsidy to identified agricultural groups and entrepreneurs. 113 registered farmers associations have already been shortlisted and will be provided with a vehicle to transport agri-produce. This benefit will be extended to another 200 beneficiaries in 2023-24. I am allocating 15 crores for the implementation of this very important program. Organic Meghalaya. The government recently adopted the Meghalaya State Organic and Natural Farming Policy 2023. So far, 15,000 hectares of area in state is organically certified and another 2,000 hectares is in the process of being certified. We target to increase the total area under organic certification to 1 lakh hectares in the next five years and the process for this will be initiated in the next financial year through the launch of a state organic mission. I am allocating an amount of 25 crores for this ambitious program which will make Meghalaya the national leader in organic cultivation. Collectivization of farmers. The FOCUS program was launched two years ago to facilitate collectivization, empower the producers of Meghalaya, of the state. As part of the program, a group corpus of 5,000 rupees per member is being provided as grant to all producer households. We also initiated the FOCUS Plus program to provide a direct cash transfer to, or 5,000 to the individual bank accounts of one member of every rural and urban household in the state. Focus Plus provi provides an untied grant aimed at empowering individuals and households to make investments decisions. In the next financial year, the Focus and Focus Plus program will be expanded. We will also initiate a household ID program to identify the unique households in the state and ensure that all the eligible households are covered. While providing the benefit of Focus Plus, the household ID will also streamline the implementation of welfare and development programs throughout uh, across departments. Improved emphasis on livestock, fishery, and weaving. The livestock sector is an important contributor to people's income and nutrition. We have a 50 to 60 percent deficit in beef, pork, milk and egg production, which is met by importing from other states. About 9,000 metric tons of pork valued at 300 crores is imported annually. 
Several programs are being implemented with the twin missions of becoming self-sufficient in livestock production and to increase the income in the rural areas. The progress, prosperity of grassroots families through livestock intervention program seeks to provide high-yielding piglets, poultry birds, and goats free of cost to the poorest households. An amount of 40 crores will be spent on this intervention in 2023-24. The piggery mission and the milk mission will continue to be implemented through cooperative societies and will benefit another 10,000 individual members. We will redouble our efforts and investments in the fisheries sector. The emphasis will be on improving production, productivity marketing, and infusion of new technologies. Integrated farming involving paddy, come fish farming, and livestock come fish farming will be taken up in a cluster mode. I am allocating 44.7 crores for the fisheries sector in 2023-24. The textile sector is key to improving the incomes of the weavers, particularly women, in several pockets of the state. A large program for cluster-based skill development and building common facility centers for the weavers will be implemented in 2023-24, targeting 10,000 weavers. A similar intervention will be, taken, will be undertaken in the handicraft and bamboo clusters to benefit over another 5,000 craftsperson. The overall investment in the primary sector for 2023-24 is at 1,560 crores, an increase of 384 crores from the revised estimates of the current financial year. Livelihoods for all. As we start the financial year 2023-24, it's worth recognizing the substantial influence that MGNREGS has had on the income levels of rural farmers, rural households. The expenditure on the program has steadily increased from 913 crores in 2018-19 to 1,300 crores in the current financial year. This has resulted in an income transfer of approximately 13,000 to each rural household. While continuing the high expenditure, we will prioritize taking up natural resource management work for the next financial year. As the population in urban areas increases, creating programs for improving livelihood becomes important. We will initiate a state government funded program for livelihood support for the urban areas focusing on workforce in the informal sectors. Infrastructure. My government's vision for making Meghalaya a $10 billion economy is contingent on sizable capital investment. It has been established that investments made on infrastructure have a significant multiplier effect on economic growth. Road connectivity. In the next five years, uh, in the last five years, my government has built more rural roads than during the previous 20 years. Despite these stupendous efforts, rural connectivity remains a challenge given our difficult terrain and climatic conditions. Further connectivity to many villages involves crossing streams and rivers. To systematically address the last mile connectivity issues, I am announcing the Chief Minister's Rural Connectivity Scheme. Through the scheme, we will connect villages not covered under PMGSY. We will also build suspension and footbridges across streams and rivers to improve the connectivity for villages that face huge challenges during the rainy months. In addition to the rural roads, several large road projects costing over 3,000 crores were initiated by the government in the last three years. Some of these include the Dauki Bholaganj Road, the Balat Shela Road, the Mairang Rani Godown Azra Road, the Demtring uh, Somintring Modimai Road, the Natyang Nongpo Road, and the Rongram Pulbari Road. We will make every effort to complete all these critical roads and dedicate them to the people of the state in 2023-24. The works on restoration of the roads and bridges damaged during the floods of June 2022 is progressing well. 
We will complete these works costing 188 crores in the next financial year. The government is developing an integrated transport network development plan and road asset management system in collaboration with the World Bank. Following these integrated approaches, we will streamline the efforts at building new roads and maintaining the existing network. I am allocating 2,226 crores for the road sector for 2023-24. Air connectivity. Improved air connectivity is one of the big triggers for economic growth for Meghalaya. The Umroy Airport was operationalized in 2018, and it currently has direct flights to nine cities, including Kolkata and Delhi. We are now working with the Airport Authority of India and other agencies to expand the existing runway to allow for the landing of larger aircrafts. This will enable direct connectivity to cities like Mumbai, Bengaluru, Hyderabad, and Chennai with huge positive impact on tourism. The Baljik Airport will be made operational soon with direct flight connectivity between Shillong and Tura. Heliports will also be built at Shillong and Tura to further enhance air connectivity. I'm allocating an amount of 15.5 crores for improving air connectivity in the state. Water supply. Meghalaya has been among the top performers in Jal Jeevan mission. The number of households with tap connection was increased from 4,550 in 2019 to almost 3 lakh today. Given the excellent performance of the state in the implementation of the mission, the union government has assured an amount of 3,700 crores for 2023-24. We have set an ambitious target to provide tap connections to all 6.3 lakh households in 2023-24. In addition to the Jal Jeevan mission, we have completed water supply schemes worth 220 crores over the last five years. These include the water supply projects in Upper Shillong, Greater Sora, Greater Bakmara, Tura, and Greater Raliang, West Chanti Hills projects. For the year 2023-24, we will complete long-pending water supply schemes of Greater Ampati, Nongstoin Urban, and Greater Rumbai, East Jente Hills, costing about 400 crores. The implementation of William Nagar water supply scheme costing 121 crores has been initiated. I am allocating 182 crores for the water supply sector from state sources for 2023-24, combining the 3,700 crores that we will be receiving from the Union Government for the Jal Jeevan Mission, the total targeted expenditure for water supply schemes for 2023-2024 stands at 3,882 crores. Power. The power sector is critical to boosting economic growth and improved quality of living. The government initiated major reforms to resolve the accumulated challenges and issues in the sector. The first unit of the long-pending Ganol hydropower project has been operationalized recently. The distressed financial condition of the State Power Corporation, MEECL, and its three subsidiaries is due to the unaddressed challenges for the past decades. I am confident that MECL can show a turnaround in the next three to five years, supported by the clear vision and policy from the government and the commitment of the employees. In the current financial year, an equity infusion of 550 crores and a grant of 100 crores have been provided to MEECL. In 2023-2024, I am budgeting an amount of 400 crores. The state has a total installed capacity of 356 megawatts, generating about 1,200 million units annually. We will augment our generation capacity and improve the power mix in favor of renewable energy. This is in line with our long-term objective of sustainable growth and carbon neutrality. This capacity augmentation will be done in a public-private partnership mode. Information technology and digital infrastructure. 
One of the core visions of my government is to provide internet connectivity to all the villages and improve the bandwidth across the state. About 1,000 uncovered villages are being targeted to be covered under the 4G USOF project and the 4G saturation project. 5G services have also been initiated at selected sites in Shillong. These services will be expanded to cover about 100 sites across the state. We are working jointly with the government of Assam to create the optical fiber network for drawing 100 gigabytes bandwidth from Bangladesh. The first phase of the Shillong Tech Park was operationalized last year and is consistently remains and it consistently remains overbooked. It has helped in creation of over 1500 jobs. The construction of the second phase of the Shillong Tech Park with an investment of 114 crores has begun. Once completed, this project will generate 3,000 jobs directly and another 10,000 jobs indirectly. The government will initiate construction of a tech park in Tura to create employment opportunities in the Garo Hills region. We will also provide additional incentives to the private sector for setting up IT and ITES enterprises. I'm allocating an amount of 191 crores towards the, towards the various initiatives in the IT sector. Infrastructure for arts and culture. The Shillong International Center for Performing Arts and Culture, built at a cost of 151 crores, has been operationalized. I will enable, it will enable Meghalaya to host large national and international events. To realize the full potential of this important infrastructure, we will initiate building a luxury accommodation in the new Shillong Township in PPP mode. The construction of the Tura Convention Center has begun, and I expect the project to be completed in two years. Establishing performance and convention spaces is essential for promoting arts and culture. Accordingly, we will build and renovate district auditoriums in all the districts. Smaller scale and community level arts and culture centers, centers will also be set up in selected locations. Many of these projects will be initiated in 2023-24, and I'm allocating an amount of 20 crores for this purpose. Infrastructure for sports. The investment in sports infrastructure has been unprecedented in the last five years. We will continue to make similar investments in the next five years with the goal of developing Meghalaya as a national sports hub. Ongoing large projects costing 500 crores including the new indoor stadium and renovation of JN Stadium at Polo Grounds, Shillong, PA Sangma Sports Complex and Track and Field Stadium at Tura, Waijer Football Stadium, West Jentia Hills, Ampati Stadium, Southwest Garo Hills, and Adokri Stadium, North Garo Hills, will be completed in the next two years. In 2023-24, we will initiate the construction of an aquatic complex equipped with an Olympic-sized swimming pool and competition-level tennis complexes in Shillong at an approximate cost of 50 crores. With all these infrastructures, Meghalaya will be proudly able to host national and international events from 2025. Over the next five years, we will ensure the availability of indoor stadia, track and field grounds, and football turfs, both natural and artificial, in all districts and block headquarters. This will entail an investment of close to 1,000 crores. We will initiate the process of construction of several of these infrastructures in 2023-24. Infrastructure for governance. The construction of the new assembly building in New Shillong will be completed this year. I am allocating 35 crores towards the completion of this very prestigious project. The construction work on the integrated administrative complexes at Peninsula, East Khasi Hills is ongoing and we will begin soon for Tura and Jawai. Proposals for construction of similar complexes in other districts will be taken up in 2023-24. The work on the upgradation 
and construction of new block infrastructures for the 46 blocks are progressing well. Proposals for construction of infrastructure in the newly created nine blocks will be sanctioned, will be sanctioned in the next financial year. The government is committed to completing the state guest house at Shillong in 2023-24. Circuit House NX will be sanctioned for Tura and Sora. We are also focusing on the upgradation of police infrastructure, including police stations, housing and outposts, including the seven newly created border outposts. I am allocating 37 crores towards the modernization of police infrastructure in the state. Infrastructure for tourism. The tourism sector is the core growth engine for the state. The tourism policy of 2023 has been recently approved. Public investments of close to 2,000 crores have been committed in the tourism sector for the next five-year period. The two five-star hotels, Vivanta Meghalaya and Courtyard by Marriott, became functional during the current financial year. These large hotels are contributing significantly to the state's economy by creating jobs and attracting high-value tourists. We, also, we, we have also initiated the process for construction of more luxury accommodation units at Tadlaskin, West Gentia Hills, Jakrem, Southwest Khasi Hills, Sora, East Khasi Hills, Nokrek, West Garo Hills, Molendep and uh, Nongmaher, Riboy, uh, Nongknum, West Khasi Hills, Shibragri and Kemragri, West Garo Hills, Bansamgri, East Garo Hills, with a total cost of 320 crores. All these projects will be completed in the next two years. Meghalaya's homestay scheme, in convergence with the PMEGP program, is, providing, is proving to be a success. Under the program, a 70% subsidy amounting to 7 lakhs is being given towards the construction of homestays. To date, 235 homestays have been sanctioned under the scheme. The construction of 1,000 homestays is targeted for 2023-24, and 5,000 homestays is targeted for 2023-2028. This intervention will create 10,000 rooms and generate 25,000 jobs. Comprehensive development of new tourism circuits, including accommodation units, approach roads to sites, wayside amenities, and other ancillary infrastructures are being finalized. Ten new circuits will be initiated in the next financial year with a proposed investment of 200 crores. The iconic Shillong Peak Ropeway project will be built at a cost of 141 crores. The relevant clearances are being obtained and the construction work is expected to commence soon. We had launched the Luxury Tourism Vehicle Scheme to create employment opportunities and enhance the overall experience for the tourist. Under the scheme, a 50% subsidy of about 10 lakhs is being given to the selected society and entrepreneurs. Already, 50 vehicles have been sanctioned and another 150 vehicles will be sanctioned during the next financial year. I am allocating an amount of 20 crores towards the scheme. Urban infrastructure. The population of Shillong urban agglomeration has grown substantially over the last two decades, leading to several urban development challenges. To resolve these issues and to realize the full potential of Shillong as a growth engine for the entire Northeast, we will build new Shillong as a twin city to Shillong. The new Shillong city will be built as a futuristic and sustainable city. It will be a hub for knowledge, creative, cultural and sports industries. The entire state administration, including the secretariat and the directorates, will be moved to New Shillong. All urban amenities like water supply, roads, power and mobility will be planned systematically. The process of preparation of master plans and DPRs has been initiated. We will see, we will set up express connectivity between Shillong and New Shillong to enable hassle-free mobility. We plan to invest about 5,000 crores on this ambitious project over the next five years. 
We will also undertake comprehensive exercises to address the issues of congestion, waste management, and beautification of Tura, Jowai, and other urban centers. A blueprint to comprehensively address the issue of traffic congestion in Shillong is ready and is being implemented. As an immediate measure, 30 buses have been procured at a cost of 10 crores under the shared school bus system. Additional interventions like improving junctions, augmentation of parking, strengthening of public transport system, and introduction of electric buses will be initiated in 2023-2024. A world-class skywalk from Police Bazaar to Barrick Point will be built at an investment of 25 crores to facilitate pedestrian movement. Border infrastructure. Meghalaya shares a 443-kilometer long international border with Bangladesh, and increasing cross-border trade will impact growth and prosperity. The government has been pursuing this agenda with the union government over the last few years. The inclusion of the 100-kilometer-long new multimodal transportation link from Hilly in West Bengal to Mahindra Ganj in Meghalaya via Bangladesh in the joint statement of the Prime Ministers of India and Bangladesh is a positive development for Meghalaya. We have 10 land custom stations, five border huts, and one integrated check post at Dauki, Tamabil, which is under construction. Proposals for creation of 16 new border huts, upgradation of four land custom stations into, fully, into full fledged integrated check posts, and establishment of one land custom station at Umkiang. East Jente Hills have been submitted to the Government of India. Governance. Over the last five years, the governance system in the states had been, have been made more efficient, transparent, responsive, and people-centric. We have been working over time on improving our performance on the various sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Due to these efforts, the state's ranking in the SDG indicative framework have been improving steadily. We have started presenting an SDG budget along with budget estimates since last year to highlight the investments being made towards achieving SDGs. The overall allocation towards achievement of the SDGs for 2023-24 is 13,000 crores, 100, 13,145 crores, which corresponds to almost 59% of the state budget. Digital governance. In the current year, the, proce the processing of all schemes, proposals, and release of funds have been made paperless through, deploy through the deployment of e-proposal system and the budget estimation allocation monitoring system. These digital government initiatives have saved 528 person years of processing time in just one year and won an international college. For 2023-24, these systems will be taken till the district level and DDO level, coupled with implementation of the e-billing system at the treasuries, the complete process of project sanctioning and fund release will become paperless. I am earmarking an amount of 11 crores towards this initiative. Citizen-centric governance. The government is implementing the Right to Public Service Act with 91 citizen-centric uh, citizen services notified under its purview. In the next financial year, we will increase the number of services and reduce the delivery times. A single citizen-facing portal of the government will be put in place to increase the ease of accessing government services digitally. We also realize that many citizens, particularly in the rural areas, may not be able to avail digital services. Therefore, a physical, center, physical centers and service delivery points are critical. A cadre of 10,000 digitally enabled village community facilitators has been created to provide services at the doorstep of every citizen. Chief Minister's service delivery centers will be set up in about 750 locations to act as one-stop shop for providing all these 
citizen services. We have deployed about 800 business correspondents for improving the delivery of banking services to the remotest villages. Our target is to ensure that the benefits of various cash transfer schemes can be handed over at the doorstep of the, to the citizens. The network of business correspondents and village community facilitators will enable complete doorstep delivery of all financial and government services, saving money and time for lakhs of people. This transformative service delivery project will be implemented at a cost of 500 crores over the next five years. Another collaborative governance initiative is the locality beautification competition through community engagement in Shillong, Tura, and Jawai. An amount of 7.6 crores was spent towards this initiative. We will continue to engage with local communities to further expand this program to other towns of the state. I'm allocating an amount of 10 crores towards this for 2023-24. The three district councils are key stakeholders in the overall development journey of the state. We will continue to work with the councils to improve governance and service delivery. In 2023-24, 141 crores of Finance Commission's grants will be transferred to the councils. Youth, employment and entrepreneurship. Sir, 74% of Meghalaya is under the age of 35. The state's future critically depends on our current investments on the youth. A mechanism to co coordinate the efforts of the various departments working on youth development is being put in place. Cross-departmental inter interventions like Youth Helpline, a youth portal, systematic and all-encompassing counselling systems and mentoring networks will be initiated in the next financial year. Skilling the youth. All the ongoing skilling programs of the different departments, including the union government's PMKVY program, will be coordinated under the Skills Meghalaya program. The forward linkage component of the skill programs will be strengthened to create employment opportunities to create employment opportunities. The areas of focus will be traditional sectors of agriculture, agri and allied activities, tourism and service sector, and new emerging sectors like AI robotics, drone technology, and design. The target for employment-oriented skill development for 2023-24 is 20,000, and for 2023-28 is 1.2 lakhs. Dedicated skill parks will be constructed at Shillong and Tura with an investment of 50 crores each. The soft skill program, Aspire Meghalaya, will continue to be implemented, targeting 20,000 youths for 2023-24. I'm allocating an amount of 20 crores for this program. Youth engagement. Two of the ongoing programs, the Chief Minister's Youth Development Scheme and Yes Meghalaya, will be expanded to intensify youth engagement. We will provide funding, support to registered youth organizations to take up activities related to sports, arts, career counseling, climate action, cleanliness drives, drives and others. I am earmarking 25 crores for these two projects. For these two projects. Chief Minister's youth centers will be constructed in 50 locations alongside the sports infrastructure as spaces for youth to convene and organize activities. Ecosystem for entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship will remain an important engine for employment generation. In July 2022, Meghalaya was awarded the best performer title in the state's startup ranking 2021 by the Government of India, owing to the success of the Prime program. So far, over 4,000 entrepreneurs have benefited from the program. In the next year, for next financial year, prime startup hubs will be made operational in all district headquarters as part of building district level startup ecosystem. To support our entrepreneurs further, I am increasing the upper limit of the startup grant from 5 lakhs to 7.5 lakhs per entrepreneur. The size of the zero interest scale up loan will be increased from 25 lakhs to 50 lakhs. Strengthening the sports ecosystem. Sports continues to be the most effective way to engage young people. In the recently conducted Meghalaya Youth Survey, 
30% of the respondents wanted to build a career in sports. In the last three years, we have made giant strides in building the sports ecosystem. Significant steps include sport, the support to state associations and the Meghalaya State Olympics Association, revival of the Meghalaya Games, successful conduct of the Northeast Olympics, initiating cash award schemes for athletes and coaches, scholarship scheme for athletes, and the STAR program for talent identification. The Meghalaya Games will be made an annual event. This year's edition of the Games will be held at Tura. The STAR program will be expanded to test 10,000 children in 2023-24. Candidates shortlisted in this program will, will be provided scholarship and put through systematic training modules. Sports academies with residential facilities for athletes will be set up at Shillong and Tura in 2023-24 and other districts in the following years. Coaches, local, national and international will be engaged to strengthen the overall ecosystem. The government will ensure that athletes and sports persons get higher rewards for their performance. The cash award scheme will be reviewed to enhance the quantum of award under various categories. We are already supporting the Meghalaya Soccer League and Mission Football. Similar support will be provided to create and nurture other sports leagues with the twin objective of promoting competitive excellence and making sports career more remunerative. In addition to sports, the spirit of competitive ex excellence should be systematically extended to other domains. The Youth Talent Challenge in 2022 under the Aspire program was a huge success. Similar challenges and competitions both at individual and youth organization levels will be conducted in domains ranging from innovation to entrepreneurship and creativity to social impact. The successful individuals and groups will be nurtured through mentoring and exposure trips both nationally and internationally. We target to send at least 5,000 youths on exposure visits locally, nationally, and internationally in 2023-24. Creative industries. Arts, craft, and music continue to be powerful ways to engage the youth. The Meghalaya Grassroots Music Program has seen 500 artists provided with platforms to perform. The success of the Meghalayan Age Store in Delhi and launch of the online store has provided opportunities for another 500 craftspersons. These two programs will be scaled up significantly in 2023-24 with an investment of 10 crores. The Megalan Age Store in Shillong will be inaugurated by the end of 2023. The first Megalaya International Film Festival held this month was success. We will, continue, we will come up with a detailed film policy to encourage shooting of films in Megalaya and take steps to strengthen the local film industry. A scheme for providing subsidies for construction of cinemas, music, and film studios will be crafted. The government is also building an OTT platform, Hello Meghalaya, to provide income to local artists and quality content for all the citizens by hosting local content. For 2023-24, I am budgeting an amount of 15 crores to support these initiatives. The government will continue to support traditional festivals and celebrations, including the Shad Nongkrem, Bedding Klam, and Wangala. Tourism festivals and events like the Shillong Literature Festival, the Cherry Blossom Festival, and the Megong Festival will also be supported. These events promote local employment, increase tourist inflow, and build Meghalaya as cultural, art, and music powerhouse. The youth budget is being presented for the second time along with the budget estimates. I have increased the youth budget from estimated amount of 1,789 crores in 2022-23 to 2,215 crores in 2023-24, an increase of 24%. Quality education. My government is committed to improving the education scenario by investing on physical infrastructure as well as human resources. We have undertaken works to build, upgrade, build and upgrade the infrastructure 
at all the government schools in the state. New infrastructure is being constructed at 208 schools at a cost of 109 crores. Major upgradation of infrastructure is being taken up at 111 schools at a cost of 97 crores. Minor repairs are being taken up at about 1,750 schools with an estimated cost of 62 crores. The construction of the College of Science and Commerce at Moplang, East Khasi Hills, and at Mahindraganj, Southwest Karo Hills will be completed next year. Every effort is being made to start the academic session in these colleges at the earliest. Three provincialized colleges in Bakmara, Sora, and William Nagar, with a total cost of 36 crores, will be completed in 2023-24. Further, four new polytechnics in Riboy, West Khasi Hills, East Garo Hills, and South Garo Hills will also be made functional. The government will make sustained efforts to improve the quality of learning at the primary, secondary, and higher secondary levels through investing in teacher training, deployment of technology, and systematic testing of students. Pre- and post-metric -met scholarships amounting to 175 crores has been distributed in the current financial year. We will streamline the process of scholarship dis disbursement for 2023-24. I am allocating 180 crores to support the students of our state. Given the primary importance of education sector, I am allocating an amount of 2,884 crores, out of which 2012, 2,015 crores is earmarked for the payment of salaries to teachers, women and, ch and children. Improving women's health and well-being is a very high priority for the state. Noticeable progress has been made in this area over the last few years. It gives me immense satisfaction to <coughs> inform this August House that the number of maternal deaths in the state has reduced by 53% over the last two years. To further reduce the MMR and IMR, we will continue to implement the Mother Program and the Chief Minister's Safe Motherhood Scheme. Apart from ensuring the health and safety of women, the government prioritizes their economic empowerment. We have set up about 43,000 self-help groups comprising women from over 4.4 lakh households. In the last five years, we have provided about 326 crores to support these farm groups. To expand market access for their products, partnerships are being built with Amazon and other e-commerce platforms. In the next financial year, more than 200 cluster-level federations of SHG women will be formalized as credit cooperative societies to provide banking services in the remote areas of the state. I am allocating an amount of 248 crores for the SHG program for 2023-2024. Early Childhood Development Program. The government has initiated Early Childhood Development Mission to deal with the challenges of underweight children, stunting and wasting. Interventions like providing eggs to children between three and six years for the first for, for two times a week and other services for cognitive development are being implemented. I'm allocating 50 crores in 2023-24 for providing ECD interventions in all Anganwadi centers. Social security and welfare. Under the CM care program, my government has increased the pensionary benefits from 6,000 rupees to 9,000 rupees per year, impacting about 66,000 senior citizens, 36,000 single mothers, and 14,000 infirm citizens. As indicated earlier, the government will deploy business correspondence to deliver these benefits at the doorstep of the citizens. I am allocating an amount of 104 crores for 2023-24. The government commits to making Meghalaya a drug-free state. A mission mode program, Drug Reduction Elimination and Action Mission, DREAM, will be launched to comprehensively tackle this important social challenge. Health and happy population. My government remains committed to ensuring the overall health and well-being of every citizen. Towards this end, various programs and policies have been designed and are being implemented. We are comprehensively upgrading the physical, physical 
infrastructure of all the health facilities starting from the state headquarters till the sub-centers. The mother and child hospitals at Jawai and the 100 better hospital in Mokurwat have been established. The construction of 19 new health facilities is at different stages of completion. The 100-bedded integrated health complex at Baljek, West Karo Hills, will be completed in 2024. The 50-bedded Thura Maternity and Child Hospital shall be expanded to 100 beds during 2023-24. The 90-bedded cancer wing in Shillong's Civil Hospital was made functional this year. The radio oncology system will also be set up by the end of 2023 to further augment our capacity in the fight against cancer. We will also set up a cancer wing in Tura Civil Hospital. The construction of 78 new sub-centers will be completed by the end of 2023 at a cost of about 43 crores. Additionally, we will set up 31 new health, urban health centers during the next financial year. The government is upgrading 20 out of the existing 31 community health centers as first referral units during 2023-24. To further strengthen these these uh, centers, we are training groups of doctors and medical professionals. We are committed to establishing medical colleges in the state. The physical, pro the physical pro progress of the Tura Medical College is about 40% and we are taking steps to fast track its construction. The proposal for setting up a medical college in Shillong in PPP mode is being actively considered and we expect to initiate this project in 2023-24. Improving health systems, the government has set up a medical recruitment board to fill up vacancies in the health sector. During 2022-23, 400 medical officers have been recruited. The board will be strengthened and all vacancies in the department will be filled up by the end of 2023. The coverage of the Meghalaya Health Insurance Scheme has increased from 2 lakh households to about 4.7 lakh households over the last five years. We target to expand this coverage to all 8.4 lakh households over the next two years. We have started using drones for the delivery of medicines in remote regions of Garo Hills. This facility will be extended to other regions in the coming years. A new scheme of setting up of Chief Minister's affordable drug centers will be implemented to make generic medicines available at cheaper rates. For 2023-24, I am allocating an amount of 20 crores towards this initiative. I am also proposing an annual outlay of 30,000 crores for all the 6,000, uh, 30,000 each. I'm sorry, I am also proposing an annual outlay of 30,000 each for all the 620, 6,275 village health councils in the state, and allocating 18.8 .8 crores towards this endeavour. The overall investment in the health sector for 2023-24 stands at 1,805 crores, which is an increase of 109 crores over the revised estimates of 2022-2023. Measuring happiness. The ultimate goal of all government interventions is citizen well-being and happiness. Measuring happiness and taking steps to increase it is a worthwhile endeavor. We will therefore develop a framework for measuring happiness in addition to evaluating performance based on indices like per capita income and sustainable development goals. Environmental conservation and climate action. Megalize ecology is fragile and the livelihoods of lakhs of people depend on nature. Accordingly, focusing on sustainability and building climate resilience are important components of the state's growth strategy. We have operationalized the, water, the state water mission through which an integrated and coordinated approach to water management is being put in place. The state is currently implementing externally aided projects to the tune of 2,500 crores focusing on environmental sustainability, forest management and water harvesting. In 2023-24, water harvesting structures at 300 locations costing about 250 crores, will be initiated. Meghalaya is leading the way in implementing interventions for protecting forests. About 88 lakh saplings have been planted over the last five years to grow, 
10,000 hectares of forest. The state is also implementing the country's largest payment for ecosystem services project called Green Meghalaya. Under the program, communities are being incentivized to conserve forest. We are currently covering about 16,000 hectares of forest and have distributed over 13 crores during the current financial year. About 50,000 hectares of forest will be protected under this program and 250 crores will be transferred to the communities over the next five years. To emphasize the central centrality of the climate agenda, I am also presenting a climate, a climate action budget for the first time this year along with the budget estimates. The overall allocation towards climate action for 2023-24 is 3,412 crores, which corresponds to about 15% of the state's budget. Budget estimates 2023-24. So for 2023-24, I have estimated the total receipts at 21,781 crores, of which the revenue receipts are estimated at 19,414 crores and capital receipts at 2,366 crores. Excluding borrowings of 2,339 crores, the total receipts are estimated to be 19,442 crores. On the expenditure side, I, must, I have estimated the total expenditure at 22,022 crores, of which revenue expenditure is estimated at 17,186 crores and capital expenditure at 4,836 crores. Excluding repayment of loans of 988 crores, the estimate total expenditure is 21,034 crores. The interest payment for 2023-24 are estimated at 1,169 crores and pension payments at 1,794 crores. I am therefore presenting the budget for 2023-2024 with a fiscal deficit of 1,592 crores, which is around 3.42% of the GSDP. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to once again express my gratitude to the people of our beautiful state for reposing their faith in this government. I am personally honored and humbled by this great responsibility bestowed upon me. Our government will work diligently to achieve the vision outlined in this budget document. Kublai, Matela, and Jahin. As there is no further business before the House for the day, the House stands adjourned till 10 a.m. on Friday, the 24th March, 2023.